Is Paul, Apostle of Christ, biblical? This movie came out in 2018, and it made a shocking $23 million at the box office, which is pretty incredible for a Bible-themed film, and way more than what they expected. James Faulkner, who played Paul in the film, claimed that he was filled with the spirit of Paul while filming, and that it changed his life. But how biblical is this movie, really? Well, let's just say that this is one of those reviews where I'm not going to be able to list all the things they got right, because it's almost entirely correct. From the setting of Paul's second imprisonment in Rome, to the ending when Luke is left with Paul alone and helps him write his final letter to Timothy before being put to death, this film went above and beyond to be accurate, and that's something that's just not very common, and it's really refreshing. I especially was glad that they portrayed Aquila and Priscilla as faithful, loving Christians, and that Luke was not just a writer, but also a physician. The movie hasn't been out for that long, so I'm going to try not to spoil it for you. But Luke's role as a doctor actually plays really well into the plot, and this is really biblical. Luke spent much time with Paul, who we know had several physical ailments, probably as a result of his being stoned, and oftentimes beaten, and Luke probably gave him medical care often. So the film shows a middle-aged Luke risking his life to visit the aged Paul in a Roman prison and deciding to write down the story of Paul's life, the book which we now know as the Acts of the Apostles in the Bible. Now Luke did write the book of Acts, but there are a few inconsistencies. Acts is not really just Paul's story. Almost the entire first half of the book of Acts is about other apostles and leaders in the church, especially Peter. And then the second half of the book, from chapter 13 and on, deals with the ministry of Paul. Also, the book ends with Paul's first imprisonment, when Paul is only under house arrest and is basically comfortable and free to spread the gospel. But the movie is set during his second imprisonment in Rome, when he is in a cold, dark prison cell in miserable conditions. If the book of Acts was written during this time, later in Paul's life, you'd think that it would continue until his present imprisonment, rather than to stop with his first one. But they do try to explain this at the end of the movie, so at least they acknowledge the inconsistency. There. That should make you sound good. What of my second arrest? Of the trial at the Forum, of Nero's verdict, of the darkness of my soul. I have begun my telling of these events with Jesus' proclamation to his followers, to bear witness for him in Jerusalem and to the ends of the earth. And the story that began in Jerusalem 30 years ago has now come to Rome. There's really only a few things that I can point to that actually seem to definitively be inaccurate biblically. And that's really impressive. First, when recounting Paul's conversion, there is a scene where Ananias comes to put his hands on him that he might receive his sight. The Bible says that when he did this, there fell something resembling scales from Paul's eyes and then he could see again. The movie doesn't show the scales. Not really a big deal, just a technicality really. Then there's the whole purpose of Christians as portrayed in the film. In the Bible, the entire purpose of the Christian life is to proclaim the gospel that Jesus is the Messiah, that he died for our sins, rose from the grave, and offers salvation through faith on his name. The movie sort of alludes to the gospel several times, but it kind of makes it sound as if the Christian's main reason for being in Rome at all was to help starving widows and orphans. You know what happens to orphans in this city? They're left on the streets to die, or they're, they're forced into prostitution at the temples. There are widows on the street corners begging for coins to feed their children. If we, if we abandon them, who will feed them? Who will care? While I'd agree that having compassion on the less fortunate is a Christ-like trait, that is not what makes Christians a light in a dark world. That's the gospel. Helping people with physical needs like food, clothes, and shelter 
will only help them as long as they're alive. But when they die, if they haven't found the salvation that is in Christ, they will spend eternity in hell. So their eternal destination is far more important than their current situation. At one point in the movie, one of the Christians actually says that Christ commanded them to care for the world. That is not true. He commanded them to preach the gospel to every creature, and doing so is, of course, the most loving thing we can do for the world. Christ asked us to care for the world, not rule it. Also, Paul speaks to the Roman jailer about Christ in one scene, and the jailer tells him that he was not convinced to be a Christian. To which Paul replies that he wasn't trying to convince him, and he goes on to explain to the man that if he became a Christian, it would be because Christ himself looked on him and shattered his defenses. I wasn't trying to convince you. <laughs> Listen to me. There's only a moment. It's not me. It is Christ himself that looks upon you and shatters your defenses. And in that moment, you will understand that you are completely known by God. I'm not trying to say that there isn't conviction that comes with the Holy Spirit of God that causes us to see our need for salvation and to accept Christ. But I will say that Paul absolutely tried to convince people of the truth of the gospel. Everywhere he went, he was reasoning with people and debating them in the synagogues and in marketplaces and from house to house. He was all about convincing people of their need to come to Christ by faith. Finally, when Luke finished the letter we know as Acts, the movie shows them copying it as many times as possible and sending it to the churches. Now, this did happen eventually, and it became accepted into the canon of Scripture, but originally, Acts was written as what seems like a personal letter from Luke to his friend Theophilus, who he was apparently trying to convince of the truth of the gospel. Later, the church would copy it and it would be spread abroad. But I doubt that this happened at the outset of Luke writing the letter. That being said, these are minor issues and the movie was actually quite good. I'm giving it a score of 46, which I consider to be 96% accurate. If you haven't seen it, I definitely recommend it. It's not filled with action and suspense like most films today, but it does accurately portray the condition and plight of Christians in Rome during the first century AD, and it gives insight into the life of Paul that most people overlook. What do you think? Have you seen Paul, Apostle of Christ? Did you notice anything that you think I missed? Let me know about it in the comments below. Now, before I go, I want to sincerely thank you for watching this video. If you like this content, don't forget to hit subscribe to support the channel and to see more content like this. I really appreciate it. Also, I want to remind you that the whole Bible is ultimately about one thing, the redemption of mankind by Jesus Christ. You see, the Bible teaches that all men are sinners and that no sinner can have eternal life with God in heaven because we must pay for our sins for eternity in hell. That's the bad news. But the good news is that Jesus died to pay the penalty for our sins. Which I consider to be Since our sin has been paid for by Christ, all that is left for you to do is to accept that gift by faith. If you've never accepted the gift of God by faith, why don't you do that today? Leave a comment or send me a message and I'll be happy to talk to you more and it gives insight having your sins forgiven that by Jesus Christ. Overlook. What do you think? Have you seen Paul, Apostle of Christ? Did you notice anything that you think I missed? Let me know about it in the comments.